Hey guys, it's me, Ethan, and today I'm going to talk about animal cloning. But, but before talking about animal cloning, I want to talk about why I chose this topic. Um, the reason that I chose this topic is because as a kid who was born in the 21st century where technological advances were made, um, the field of gene cloning and ge genetic engineering is still growing very fast right now. And I feel like that by researching deep into animal cloning and some other related stuff, I could um, get a bigger picture of what these gene genetic engineering's potential are and maybe helping me in the future. And after you have heard what I think animal cloning is and why I want to do this topic, it's time to talk about the real stuff. But before talking it, I want to talk about the most famous um, example of um, a um, animal cloning. Meet Dolly. Um, Dolly is no ordinary sheep. She, she was the first ever su successfully cloned mammal done by the scientist. Dolly was born on July 5, 1996 and was made through the method of somatic cell nuclear transfer, which I'll talk about later. However, Due to the effects of animal cloning, she only lived about 11 years old. People argue that she was born with gene from a 6-year-old sheep, and that the telomeres are shorter, which may lead to the death of Dolly, since she was born with shorter telomeres and can't replicate itself anymore. Nevertheless, until last year, scientists still have no idea in terms of how Dolly died. These are pictures of nowadays cloned animals, and most commonly um, practiced on pigs on the right. Um, scientists are still trying to make pigs produce the human organs that we need, and it is crucial that we use gene cloning, since we uh, animal cloning, since we need the exact same gene of every pig for it to produce the right human organs that humans want. Next, let's, let's talk about what is cloning exactly. Um, cloning just describes the process of making two biologically identical copies of organisms. Sometimes cloning can happen naturally, that is when bacteria reproduce asexually. The picture on the right is a picture of an army of clone troopers. It may seem weird and stupid to put that picture there, but these troops are identically and genetically modified troops, which serves as a proof that cloning may be possible uh, in the future. Who knows? After we have located the organisms that we can't clone, uh, that we want to clone, sorry, we take a sample of its somatic cell. Somatic cell is any cell on the organism except for the sperm and the egg. The nucleus of the somatic cell is then extracted and the rest of the cell is now useless. We then take an unfertilized egg from a female and take its nucleus away, leaving an empty egg. And scientists then fuse the nucleus and the empty egg together, forming a fertilized egg of the clone. On the picture at the bottom, you can see that the human cell or any organism cell are, form, are divided into two kinds. One is the somatic cell and one is the germline cell. The germline cells are the blue cells. These germline cells are just basically sperms and egg. And the somatic cells have the complete set of um, uh, chromosomes and DNAs. And somatic cell is just any cell except for sperm or egg. And it could be from brain cell to skin cell to muscle cell, any cell except sperm and egg cell. On this diagram, you can see that the green green um, somatic cell is from the donor. The nucleus is then extracted. The egg cell from the uh, from a female uh, female has its nucleus removed since we don't want the uh, nucleus to be there. Um, scientists then fuse the nucleus and the egg together, forming a fertilized egg of the clone. 
So how exactly is the new um, fertilized egg formed? In the first method, um, uh, scientists take the nucleus from the somatic cell and then inject it into the empty egg. The second way is directly, direct, directly fusing the complete somatic cell with the empty egg using electricity. Either way, both methods require the egg to be empty, which means the nucleus to be taken out. This is very crucial in the process because if the nucleus of the egg stays, then the result of the, then the result of the clone may be a mix of the females and the de donor's DNA, which is not the purpose and not the scientists want. After the fuel process is done, the egg is going to develop into an early stage embryo inside a test tube. And it will be later put back into an uh, adult female's uh, womb for later development into a baby. After the adult gives birth to the baby, the baby is supposed to have the same gene as the somatic cell. And this young animal is referred to as a clone. From this diagram, you can see that the fertilized egg, uh, which has the nucleus of the donor and the empty egg, forms into a early stage embryo and is um, developed in a test tube. After it has developed into a certain rate, the scientists will then put the, um, uh, the embryo back into a female animal's womb. Then the embryo will develop into a baby inside the womb, and then the baby will be born. We call this baby a clone. So after you have heard me um, explain all of these animal cloning, you still might have some questions to what that means. So I'm going to make a handmade model to make this process clearer to you. Now that you have known what animal cloning is, I'm going to talk about... I'm going to make a model talking about animal cloning. So this green sheep here is the cell that will, uh, is the animal that we want to clone, and this um, purple sheep is a female sheep that will provide us an egg. This is one of the somatic cell. We scientists take out the nucleus of the somatic cell, and the rest of the cell is useless, so we don't want it anymore. And we take out the nucleus from the egg since we don't want the genetic. Um, information of the female sheep. Scientists then fuse the nucleus from the somatic cell with the egg from the female, empty egg from the female, together to form a fertilized egg. Fertilized egg like this. Then the fertilized egg will develop into an early stage embryo in a test tube. Then this um, embryo is injected into a female to um, later develop into a baby that will look same as the um, uh, sheep that donated the somatic cell. So this process is called the animal cloning. After you have known um, what animal cloning is and its function and its effects, um, now I'm going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages. Um, here is a graph of, uh, not a graph, a chart of a list of advantages and disadvantages. Um, the advantages are that the scientists can replicate endangered animals to save them from extinction. Like if an animal is um, extinct or in danger, the scientists can take one of their somatic cells and then um, clone them um, fast. And the other one is meet the meat and the milk consumption need. Like. Um, um, humans consume a lot of meat and by um, cloning like beef, cattle, um, sheep, chickens, um, um, like we can make a large population of those animals to meet our um, level of consumption. And the, uh, uh, the last one is organs can be used in organ transplant just like I said um, about the pig, scientists are trying to make pigs produce the human organs and scientists can then clone those pigs with the right genes to produce large amounts of um, organs that humans need.
And uh, one disadvantage is low genetic diversity, and I'm going to talk about an example later. And clone animals tend to die younger. Um, although there isn't like a a very sure, like scientists aren't very sure if yeah clone animals tend to die younger. Um, scientists are just hypothesizing that clone animals tend to die younger. Not clone animals always die younger. Tend to die younger. And the last one is failure rate is higher than success rate. And like I said in the introduction, this um, gene engineering field is still a growing field. So there's there might still be some methods or technologies that the scientists still haven't figured out. So the failure rate now is still very high. So I'm going to talk about one of the advantage. Um, in this graph, you can see that this is the graph of the um, organ donations and the waiting list in America. The pink one is the waiting list, the blue one is the transplant, and the uh, the uh, what say uh, green green is the uh, donations. From this graph, you can see that the waiting list is super high, like a uh, hundred thousand more. More than a hundred thousand, but uh, the transplant is only like a fourth of the waiting list, and the donors are just less than the transplant. Um, we can infer that the need for human organs now is still um, uh, still not enough. So the pig thing can come back again. Like he, um, scientists can replicate the pigs to make hormones human organs so that humans don't have to donate their organs when they die um, humans can just use the pig's organ and one of the advantages is what I say the low genetic diversity um, the idea behind this is that if every gene is the same say like I have a very um, very delicious corn and then the whole country plants this corn but if one day scientists find a new kind of disease or a pathogen, it might just that the corn isn't immune to. All of the corn will die since like every corn is the same and then every corn is not immune to the pathogen. So the result is that every single corn will die. And this happens in real life before. It's called the Irish potato famine. As everyone knows, Irish people's everyday staple is potato, and they inbreed the potatoes that they want. Although this is not technically animal cloning, but this is like the predecessor of animal cloning. It's basically um, breeding the kind of potatoes that you want, the traits that they have, and then um, producing the potatoes that they, that they want. But the problem is that the um, a pathogen uh, or a disease, I forgot, came and then sweep all the potatoes away, um, causing large populations to die, and then a huge immigration emigration, um, to America. And from this diagram, you can see that the red part is the... Um, um, from the key, you can see that red part, the dark red is over 30%. So this means that over 30% of that area's population dropped. And you see that most of the Ireland's population dropped over over 10 to 20%, which is very detrimental to the country. This is the uh, sources that I use while making this video. And once again, thank you for uh, watching my video.